Morning, welcome back to the Electric Valentines. I'm Jerry. You join me and my wife Allison here as we head out for a sushi lunch. But I wanted to take this time to give you guys an update about where OpenPilot currently stands with the Rivian, what's working, what's not working, how it's continually getting better. So let's jump right into it. So in terms of where we stand right now, out of the box, if you're using just the base harness, whether that's Comus harness or Lucas's harness, the Comma 3X is only controlling your lateral movement, that's your steering. And the Rivian is responsible for your longitudinal movement, that's acceleration and braking. So that's not to say you don't have full driving automation, you do, it's just that the Rivian is controlling part of it and the Comma is controlling the other part. So the Rivian's dynamic cruise control actually works really nicely on highways, but when it comes to driving on local roads, stop and go traffic, that's where the praise really ends. And this is the main reason why Lucas's longitudinal upgrade is so valuable. Using the Rivian's dynamic cruise control to control your follow distance, to control your set speed, results in a kind of a herky-jerky experience when it comes to stop and go traffic on these local roads. It's not necessarily a deal breaker. In fact, there are a lot of people that prefer the Rivian's dynamic cruise control over OpenPilot Longitudinal. I'm not one of them. I actually think that OpenPilot Longitudinal is a much smoother, more natural feeling drive, no matter where you're driving, whether it's the highway or local roads. But there are people out there that prefer Rivian's dynamic cruise control. So I'll just put that out there in case you haven't got the longitudinal upgrade yet and you're not quite sold on it. Using the Rivian's dynamic cruise control to control your longitudinal is a perfectly usable solution before you decide to go to open pilot longitudinal. But where things really start to get interesting is when you use this guy right here. This is Lucas's longitudinal upgrade kit. What this has is additional CAN bus signal processing abilities, which lets the Comma 3X process uh, steering wheel button signals, front facing radar signals, blind spot monitoring signals, now the Comma 3X can take all those signals and give you full open pilot longitudinal access, which means the Comma 3X is not only controlling your steering, but your acceleration and braking as well. What's nice about this too is it's totally plug and play. You don't need to cut or splice any wires. It plugs right into the existing Comma harness. All you have to do is run a second USB-C cable into the secondary port on the Comma 3X and it works perfectly right out of the box. Using this upgrade kit with OpenPilot Longitudinal, you do get those extra safety features like the blind spot monitoring, which allows you to do automatic lane changes with blind spot delay, which basically means if you initiate an automatic lane change, it won't actually change lanes until it sees that that lane is clear and that you don't have any traffic in your blind spot. You also have full access to the steering wheel controls, so you can set follow distance, or when it comes to OpenPilot, this is actually driving personality, which is tied to following distance and set your set speed with the uh, left and right buttons. And it all works perfectly like stock. So all the operation is like stock. A quick button press will increase speed by one. A long press will increase by five. And it syncs up very nicely with the set speed on the dash display as well. Not perfectly all the time, but like 99% of the time it works great. Is this gonna be like with uh, Teslas? What do you mean? Well, one of the Tesla things is I like that I like is uh, the lane changes how it oh, okay yeah so no it's not like fully automatic lane changes like um, I, I'm not super familiar with autopilot but uh, you do have to initiate the lane change with the turn signal and then it will do the lane change so it's not going to decide to do to make a lane change for you uh, without your input so I'm not sure if that's what you mean but it Christ. does it tell you that you could make a lane change? No, it doesn't tell you anything. Like it's all up to you whether or not you want to make a lane change. It's not going to suggest anything to you. Um, but there are elements in the UI that will let you know if there is a car in your blind spot. If there is, for example, I think we have one right now where the lane line turns yellow. Once that yellow line is gone, that means your blind spot is clear. So if that yellow line is, uh, is there and you've got a lane change initiated, it's not going to change lanes until it sees that it's clear. So to take advantage of everything the harness offers, you do need to use uh, Sunny Pilot, which is a fork of OpenPilot that includes a lot of extra features that are actually beloved by the community, including Mads mode, which I've talked about before on this channel. But Sunny Pilot is built to take advantage of the upgrade kit out of the box. So all you need to do is plug and play, 
uh, activate the toggles within the Sunny Pilot software and you're ready to go. But when it comes to Sunny Pilot settings, it probably is a good idea for me to kind of go over what my recommended settings are uh, as things currently stand today. So let's kind of do that now. Okay, there shouldn't be any reason to change anything under the device menu, except to go into always off-road mode if you are not in there already. There are many toggles you won't be able to select unless you are in always off-road mode. Network, obviously, connect to your Wi-Fi. SunnyLink is useful if you are a paid supporter, I believe even at the $5 a month level. You can save your settings and restore them after updating to a different branch of uh, Sunny Pilot. Under the toggles menu, everything should be set up here by default. No need to change anything unless you want to use the metric system. Under software, again, no reason to change anything here. You can change branches here if you'd like. Models, I currently use the down to ride default model, which is down to ride V6. I also have live learning steer delay on. Under the steering menu, MADS is set up by default. Under customized lane change, this is where you set your automatic lane change settings. By default, I believe it is on nudge, which means you have to physically nudge the steering wheel for it to initiate a lane change. However, you can change this to nudgeless, which means it will initiate an automatic lane change just by uh, turning on the uh, turn signal. You can also set a little bit of a time delay on that from half a second all the way up to three seconds. I find that half a second works pretty well. Also make sure you have auto lane change delay with blind spot toggled on. That will delay your automatic lane change if the comma senses there is traffic in your blind spot. Once the traffic is clear, then it will initiate the lane change. Under visuals, make sure that you have show blind spot warnings turned on. That will turn on the UI elements that show there's traffic in your blind spot. It's basically a yellow line on the lane divider that signals to you that there is traffic there. No need to change any of these. Under developer, you need to turn on Open Pilot Longitudinal Control Alpha if you use Lucas's Longitudinal Upgrade Kit. Uh, you may need to tap your brake for that to show up if it's not showing up there. Once you tap your brake, hopefully it'll show up, then you'll be able to toggle it if you are in always off-road mode. Otherwise, you may need to reboot the comma for it to show up. There's also a toggle here that sh says show advanced controls. If you toggle this on, this enables some other settings. For example, under steering, there's a setting called pause lateral control with blinker. This is useful if you like to signal early for turns upcoming at intersections. The comma does not know whether or not you want to make an upcoming turn or if you want to change lanes. So if you're the kind of person that signals a little bit early for upcoming uh, turns at intersections, the, uh, the comma may try to change lanes for you, even when you may not necessarily want to. If you have this toggled on, it will pause any lateral control, which is steering control, as long as you're going underneath a certain speed, in which case default it's 20 miles per hour. You can adjust that. So that is useful for people who don't want the comma to try to change lanes for you if you are just signaling for an upcoming turn. I actually typically leave this off when I'm coming up to turns at intersections. I'm usually, I've usually got my hands on the steering wheel anyways, so I can cancel a lane change if it's trying to do that. But I know there's people out there that like this setting, so that is definitely something you may want to consider using. That's it. So those are my recommended settings. So let's talk about what's currently holding OpenPilot back or what limitations are still there when it comes to OpenPilot on the Rivian. The first thing, and again, I've talked about this on the channel before, is, is that we currently have a 90 degree steering lockout. Now this really only comes up when you're driving on local roads. This will never be an issue when you're driving on the highway. But if you're using MADS, for example, driving on local roads and you wanna make a turn at an intersection, the Rivian is perfectly capable of doing that. It's got enough torque, but uh, using the torque-based messaging system the way we are now through LCAST, there is a 90 degree lockout, which means once the steering wheel goes past 90 degrees, it basically gives up, like loses all of the steering torque. Now this is kind of frustrating because there are a lot of 90 degree turns where the Rivian is just almost able to make it. But you know, once it gets that past that point, it's just, as I said, gives up. One of the ways we're hoping to solve that is uh, figuring out how to use angle-based steering messages rather than torque-based. This is something that we haven't cracked yet. Lucas is working on it, but it's all tied into the Driver Plus system, which as you guys know, only works on pre-mapped areas of the highway. What we need to do is figure out how to access that system 
even when we're not in those pre-mapped areas so that it accepts those angle-based steering messages no matter where we are. Now, another related issue is that steering torque is so closely tied to your wheel and tire configuration. I've got another video that talks about this in depth, but basically, if you're using tires that are not EV rated or E-load rated, that flex in the sidewall can affect how much the steering torque that we have available is able to actually translate into a turn when using open pilot. Luckily, I think both of these issues can be resolved once we solve this angle-based steering issue. But as it stands, this is still a current limitation, but hopefully we get this solved over the next couple months. Uh, if we do, of course, I'll keep you guys updated. So if you guys want to try these out, where do you get this stuff? Um, if you don't have a comma 3X yet, you can buy that from comma shop at comma.ai slash shop. Uh, you can also get their version of the harness there. If you if you want to support Lucas, buy his version of the harness and his upgrade kit. Those are available on xnor.shop. Lucas does offer a discount if you buy his harness and his longitudinal upgrade kit together, which in total brings that price down to a little bit cheaper than getting the harness from Kama. So definitely check that out. I'll include both links down in the description below. I encourage you guys to go take a look. So that's pretty much it for where we stand with Open Pilot on the Rivian. But I will say like over the past six months, it's been really cool to see how much the community has come together and developed Open Pilot to where it is currently. And that of course is in huge part to Lucas Lokolbin's efforts. So huge thumbs up to Lucas, but it will be very interesting to see where we are, you know, two, three months from now. One of the things that Lucas is currently working on is integrating the front radar signals with OpenPilot's uh, visual system to give us a much smoother uh, experience in terms of stop and go traffic. I will keep you guys up to date on those improvements as well. But I'd like to hear from you guys. Are you using OpenPilot on your Gen 1 Rivians? Are you looking forward to possibly being able to use this on Gen 2s? Or are you guys happy with uh, the Gen 2s autonomous features as they stand right now? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I appreciate your support for the channel. Please like and subscribe for future updates. And as always, thanks for watching and enjoy the drive.